Hi, I'm Lily Edgington and I'm going to present our case report of a standing surgical procedure for the treatment of otitis media in a horse. Otitis media is an inflammatory process of the middle ear. It's relatively uncommon in horses and clinical signs can be attributed to the facial nerve dysfunction and the vestibular cochlear nerve dysfunction due to their close proximity of these nerves that run through the internal acoustic meatus. Clinical signs vary from nystagmus, head tilt, ataxia, muscle deviation, uh, decreased lacrimation, corneal ulceration and um, ear paresis. Otitis media is usually treated medically with uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and antimicrobials. However, this is often unsuccessful and we may appreciate why if we look at the CT image uh, with the contained purulent material within the bulla without any possibility of drainage. So the first surgical treatment of otitis media was described by Ullendorf et al. in 2017. Medical treatment had been unsuccessful with this horse and so the tympanic cavity was incised um, and opened transendoscopically using an NDIAG laser and this was performed on a general anaesthesia. In our case we had a 13 year old gelding Appaloosa with an acute onset of facial nerve paralysis on the left side and as you can see here from the picture as he presented to the hospital with the drooping left ear, muzzle deviation to the right, ptosis of the left eye and difficulties prehending and withholding food. He was able to swallow, there were no gait abnormalities or any uh, other cranial nerve deficits other than the facial nerve deficits described. And there was no apparent history of trauma reported by the owner. An endoscopic examination of the upper respiratory tract, including the guttural pouches, was um, within normal limits. So the gelding was sent for a, a CT of his head, uh, which showed a presence of moderate amount of soft tissue attenuating material on the left internal auditory meatus, which is suggestive of otitis media. The horse was treated medically for six weeks with trimethoprim sulfadiazine orally twice a day, phenylbutazone orally twice a day, and chlorohexatetracycline for the eye ulcer three times a day for two weeks. The horse was reassessed at two and four weeks, and although the eye ulcer was healed after two weeks, the muzzle deviation still remained, and so it was decided that the horse would be re-emitted to the hospital for surgical treatment. Surgical procedure was performed under standing sedation with initial sedation of 0.01 mg per kg IV of detomidine and maintained with two top-up doses of 0.01 mg per kg remifidine IV at 15 minutes interval. The flexible endoscope was passed through the left uh, nasal passage the left guttural pouch and five mils of local anaesthetic was applied to the mucosa. The site of interest was immediately medial to the most proximal aspect of the left stylo bone and this area had been ascertained as the location of the left tympanic villa based on the previous CT images. A diode laser was used in contact mode at 20 watts until the mucosa penetrated through to the tympanic cavity. On perforation of the tympanic bulla, a yellow mucopurulent fluid was noted to drain out, as seen here in the intraoperative picture, and a sample was taken for culture and sensitivity. The horse continued on trimethoprim sulfadiazine and phenylbutazone orally BID postoperatively, and he remains bright and comfortable whilst he was in the hospital. Uh, on repeat examination the following day, the fenestration site was patent and the tympanic bulla was lavaged with 5 mils of sterile saline. The horse was discharged from the hospital and to return to his normal routine at home. Later on, due to the sensitivity results, the antimicrobials were changed to emrofloxacin orally once a day, three days post-surgery and continued for 14 days. The outcome six months post-surgery was great. The horse was bright and healthy. You can see that both of his ears were equally toned, both at rest and um, 
when he was alert. There was still a slight muzzle deviation, but he was able to prehend and masticate food well without dropping any. And on the right here, we can see the endoscopic exam six months post-surgery. The fenestration site has healed and closed and there was no sign of inflammation. So the surgery was deemed successful. In conclusion, the fenestration of the tympanic bulla can be performed safely using contact diode laser, understanding surgery for treatment of otitis media in horses. This procedure allows an intraoperative sterile sampling of fluid within the tympanic bulla for targeted postoperative antimicrobial therapy, thus improving the outcome and antimicrobial stewardship. Also, this surgical approach could be considered first-line treatment for otitis media in the future. And finally, I would just like to thank all of my co-authors and everyone else involved.